Hello, my name is Nadine, and welcome to Hopalong Studio. So today I'm answering the question, what is the best inexpensive paint pen for my creative practice? I've done some paint pen videos before, but they had to do more with artist paint pens. But I have been getting some questions about paint pens, about more specifically inexpensive ones that will work well if you don't have the budget for artist paint pens. So I've been working with different ones for the last six months or so. Today, I wanna to share with you the three brands that I would suggest if you're looking for an inexpensive paint pen. So if you're new to paint pens, it's good to know that paint pens have really improved over probably the last five years. When I first started getting paint pens and even artist paint pens, I found a lot of them were really flaky. It was hard to get ones that would last more than a few uses. And when you did, you were spending quite a premium on trying to get really great paint pens. And the worst thing when you're getting paint pens is only getting one or two uses out of a pen. That's very frustrating. So there's a few things to consider when choosing a paint marker. One of those things is opacity and the vibrancy of the color. Any of the Uni Posca or R pens, they are made with pigment paint. They are usually very vibrant and they are usually quite opaque. And that's what I would expect from an art marker considering the price point. But if you're looking for some cheaper options, you have the Sharpies, you have the Thule Art pens, you have all of these different brands I'm gonna share with you today. They don't necessarily have bad opacity. It's just being aware that they're not all the same and they're not necessarily always gonna be as vibrant as the art pens. But just choosing something with a good opacity will help you be able to enjoy your less expensive art pens throughout the life of that pen. And one thing to realize is that all the nibs are different on these different pens. For example, the Uni Poscas that I have, uh, this one is with a bullet tip. And this one is going to give you much thicker lines and it's going to be able to give you very opaque color. Most of the inexpensive paint markers will either come with just a very fine tip or they will come with a thicker bullet tip. So depending on what you're looking for and how fine you want your writing to be, that's going to affect what you will choose to buy. But I tend to go for the ones that are a little bit more fine. For example, like this Thule Art one, where again, you can get some fairly light application but also you can put it on its edge and still get really nice solid color and then you have these sharpie ones these are a metallic water-based paint sharpie and you can get these in the pin type which again gives you that little bit more fine tip and a lot more solid color and be aware that between the sharpies there are actual paint pens that are water-based paint pens and there are also these sharpie permanent markers that, for example, this one's bronze is metallic, but my understanding of the Sharpies is I believe they're oil-based. You are gonna be able to get the nice solid color. You're also gonna be able to get those fine lines, but they are made a little bit differently than these Sharpie markers. And be aware that the quality of the nib will depend on how long the, the paint pen will last. Some of them come with replacement nibs. A lot of them don't though. So if you get some fibers into the nib or the nib gets damaged, it won't flow properly and that pen's pretty much done. So that's something to be really aware of when you are choosing pens and even think a little bit more carefully about the surface you're using. And lastly, you wanna make sure you have something with a tight cap. All of these should make a very strong clicking noise when you put the pen cap back on. What that means is that you are going to be able to have these seal really, really well. And that also means they're not gonna dry out. So when you're choosing an inexpensive paint pen, it can be sometimes overwhelming to know where to start. Uh, there's a little bit of variation in the price point even, but a lot of them are in that similar price point. And when I say a similar price point, I'm talking about a lot of them are, are around a dollar Canadian, maybe a dollar and a half Canadian, I consider a cheap paint pen. A lot of my Poscas in Canadian dollars, I think would be around five, four or five dollars, maybe a little bit more, maybe a little bit less, but they are quite a bit more than the sets of the cheaper paint pens that you get. I'm gonna try not to talk too much about price point, just because I know prices fluctuate as time and inflation, but I wanted to kind of give you a sense of where I'm starting when I consider a cheap paint pen. So the first brand I want to show you is the Artistro Paint Pen. So these ones I have in trending colors and metallics. So these are the metallic ones, and they have those clear barrels. You can see the paint level, and uh, they come in a really beautiful range of colors. I also have these trending colors, and these trending colors have a bit more pastels, uh, they are a little bit more of an interesting color mix. And you'll notice that the caps have a slightly different barrel and cap style, so you can tell the difference between the two different types of pens. So when using these pens, you can notice that the color does break out quite a bit, so you do need to shake these pretty well to be able to use them. But I find the key to a lot of these paint pens is you shake them very, very well. And then when you're done shaking them, 
you'll notice that the paint is fully mixed. You want to take it off. You want to touch the tip with the top of your finger and just press it in slightly. That's going to vent the pressure in the pen and that's gonna help it write a little bit better and it's gonna require less priming. So because I've been using a lot of these pens for more than six months, they've already been primed. But I just wanted to show you that when you're actually using them on, for example, black here, they have very vibrant color. Artistro metallic pens are great for just doodling onto your art journal paper, or just really any sort of project. And then I'm gonna come in with a little bit of one of the Artistro trending colors. And again, these ones, again, you do need to shake well. But one thing I've learned recently is again, that whole venting the cap makes all the difference. When you just vent it to let a little bit of that air pressure out, you get them working better and you don't have to press them down. You don't have to prime them a lot. They work really, really well. And so I'm just gonna add some little dots on top here. You can see that the color is quite vibrant and it really has quite good color. I'm going to show you some samples later, but showing the comparison between all of these paint pens. I've been using this set of pens for more than six months. Example of this is this layout here. I use basically some Posca pens and are a bunch of the Artistro trending colors and metallics to finish off this page. So you can see you can add a lot of color. It goes on very solidly. It creates a really beautiful look to your original pages. And so that's why it's a favorite of mine just because I've been using them for six months. They've been working pretty much flawlessly. I haven't had any of the nibs really clog. And part of that has been careful to use it on smoother paper. Again, more fibrous paper, you gotta watch a little bit because you can clog the nibs quite easily with that. So if you've enjoyed what you've seen so far, if you could like this video, subscribe, and just hit that notification button so you don't miss out on any future videos. Anytime you like or share this video, it just helps other people to see it. So thank you so much for your support. So I really feel like I can always suggest this Artistro pens just because I've had a lot of experience with them and they've worked really, really well. But what if you're looking for a different brand of pen? Are you fine that Artistro pens uh, not available where you are, or you're looking at it for something else. Uh, then the next option I would suggest are the acrylic painter pens. These are made by Fly C. And so sometimes you'll notice when you look at them on Amazon and other places, they will not say Fly C on them. Even these ones, in when I saw them on the advertisement and in the pictures, it showed Fly C, but then they did not have them on the actual pens themselves. I just happen to know that these are the colors of Fly C and I know I did get the correct set of pens, but they're also looking like they're being shown up more as acrylic painters. So just be aware that you might just have to look a little bit carefully to make sure you get the right set of pens. And I'm gonna link below all of these different pens. So just in case you're not sure if you have the right one, you can just click on the link and that will help you make sure you end up with the right pen. And so these pens are very similar in a lot of ways to the Artistro pens. They basically have a very similar profile. Uh, the acrylic painters are slightly longer uh, they have almost identical nibs, but again, I purposely got the 0.7 nibs because that's what I like using a lot. So you can see there's very little difference between these two pens. The reason I chose the Fly Seas is they had really good ratings on Amazon. And more importantly, I've been attending art classes with a lot of people who do use them. And so they've had nothing but really good results with them. So I tended to trust people that I know who spend a lot of time testing products and that have had good results with them too. And so you can see it's quite opaque. I would say almost a little bit more opaque than the Artistro pens, but it also depends on what look you're going for. And again, this is comparing more metallic to a straight color. And I think maybe as well, these ones have a tiny bit more white in a lot of the pen mixes, which is probably why they look more opaque because the moment you add white to something, it does look more opaque. And these ones as well too, I find that sometimes you might need to just press down the nib, but most of the time they work pretty much as soon as you put color down. And so with these ones, you can see they're just having no problem getting color down. I'm not having to worry about fussing with them. I'm not having any issues with them not working. And that's a really good sign because usually if you're gonna have problems with paint pens that aren't well made, you're gonna have problems with them right away. I saw on some different paint pens online that some people got one or two uses out of them. And I found the same thing for myself. You usually get one or two uses before the paint pen dies completely. So the third type of pen I wanted to share with you today was the Thule Art acrylic paint pens. And I purposely got this set as a set of pastels because I don't have a lot of pastel pens. I like using a lot of paint pens on black. So that's why I chose this particular set. So these particular ones were a little bit more expensive. So I think I paid $35 for 24 pens and that's in Canadian dollars. So again, exchange, uh, inflation, depending on when you're watching this video, that price may have changed. I saw a lot of really good comments on them on Amazon. So I thought I would give them a try and see how they worked. And I love just the variety of colors. 
And I love that there's so many pens to choose from. And that gives you a lot of really fun pastel colors that you can use. And what's really neat about these ones is they actually have a little window. I like the look of the barrel being black and being able to have that. But what I like is they did leave a little window in there so you can actually see the paint level so you know when you're running out of paint. The other nice thing about this is they actually added some extra nibs. And they actually even have instructions about how to clear your nibs when you have issues with them. And I'm like, thank you very much for just providing us that information because that for me makes it worth it knowing that I can get some replacement nibs so that if these do have issues, I don't have to throw out a pen. I can keep using it. I can replace the nib and just keep working. I got these more recently. I have been playing with them, but I left a few colors aside so I could show you how to prime these because I do notice there's a lot of comments about people not sure how to prime a pen. I'm just gonna give this a good shake. I'm looking at the color in the side of the pen. It is mostly mixed, but it's always good just to give them a few little extra shakes just to make sure that they're working really, really well. You wanna put your finger down and just vent the top. Get all of those air bubbles out of the pen. Now you wanna turn it upside down and just push it down. And now I'm just gonna keep an eye on the paint because it will quite quickly come to the edge of the nib. So right there, you can see that the paint is coming to the edge of the nib. You don't wanna over prime these things because then you start glopping paint onto your surface. It can make the entire nib wet and then you're gonna run into other issues. And you don't have to jam it down hard. I like actually leaving a little bit of the nib so you can see what's going on and how it's coming down so you don't end up with a big pool of color. And in this case, I'm just going to start adding a little bit of color onto my page. And you can see just the opaqueness of this paint pen. And because these are a little bit more expensive, I think there's a slightly better quality to these ones. I feel like they're a little bit closer to the Posca's than maybe to some of the other paint pens. But again, I'm only using the pastel ones and it could, just could be that they have a good white paint that they're using in here for mixing color. Uh, I can't say for sure because I don't own the entire collection, but you're getting quite vibrant color even for those yellows. So those are the three brands I can suggest if you're looking for inexpensive paint pens. But what I like doing is having a bunch of inexpensive paint pens and then a few specialized paint pens that are a little bit more expensive to add to my collection because I find that they make the biggest difference in how things look on my pages. And this is where I'm gonna grab my sample book and just show you some examples of this. So first of all, let's take a look at all of the samples that I have done so far. So here we have the Fly C, and the Fly C is, has some really good color to it. Very vibrant, very opaque, it works quite well. Actually, the Artistro Trending colors and the metallic colors are a little bit lighter, but I find that I don't notice it that much when I'm working on a project. But knowing this, maybe you will stick with the Fly C's over the Artistro just because you might like the look of this color. And if you wanna see a closer in-depth look at these particular charts, I have them up on my website. I'm gonna drop the link below so that you can reference these. And then again, I've done the Sharpie Metallics and these are the water-based ones versus the more oil-based ones. And then here's the Thule Art Pastels. And I actually did the Thule Art Pastels on white, and I also did them on black. And so you can see that they do look quite a bit different, but they have uses in both places. And where you may want to use an artist pen instead of a cheaper pen might be with your white pens. So here I show you a, quite a few different pens. The Sakura Pen Touch Pen, Uni Posca Pens, Artistra White, Artistra Metallic, Fly C Painter, and then the closest thing I had in the Thule Art was the Lullaby color, which is a very light gray. So you can see that the Uni Posca is actually quite a bit more vibrant when it comes down to the white. The Fly C would be kind of the close second. And so with the Uni Posca, the only reason the white bullet and the pen nib are different in color is because my white bullet is almost out of paint. And when you're running low on paint, it can sometimes give you a little less pigment. So this Uniposca pen nib one being one of my fresh ones, I thought that was probably the best example of the Uniposca. But again, those fly seas are pretty close too. So if you're looking for something that's quite opaque. So the example I want to show you of this is this particular example. You'll notice some areas of it are darker, more opaque color, and other ones are lighter. And that has to do with the fact that I use both the Artistro and the Posca pen on here. And so you can see the Artistro is quite a bit lighter. The Posca is quite a bit more opaque. When choosing a pen, I would say that get some cheaper paint pens and then get yourself a very strong colored white pen. The black ones, I thought there'd be more difference in the black actually. In this one here, you can see the Uni Posca, you can see the Artistro and the Fly C, and I thought there'd be more difference in it. 
I thought that the black for the Iniposca would be quite a bit darker, but it really isn't. So if it comes down to it, I would prioritize having a good white pen over having a good black pen. And the last one I would add to my collection are the pen touch pens. So I actually have one here. I'll show you again how to prime it. And with this one, it's a little bit different. You don't want to prime it hard. What you want to do is take the pen that you've just taken out, vent it, then turn it upside down. And you want to just press it extremely gently. Try to get it going. It will prime very fast. I was priming one yesterday and I put the nib down and held it for a few seconds and then just had a flood of paint. And so be very careful when you're doing these ones. I believe this is a ceramic type of a paint pen. So it's a little bit different than those water-based ones, but you can see the color's quite vivid. So when you're adding in that vivid color to areas like this, you can see how solidly it goes onto the surface and it goes on like quite a bit deeper and stronger. And especially for metallic, because that's a metallic, this is a metallic, this metallic is much brighter. And that's part of the reason I like using these pen touch ones. I don't use them all the time. I just use them for those details when I want that little bit of extra shimmer on my project. So the last thing I want to talk about is how much paint these paint pens hold. I've noticed comments of people going, well, my paint pen didn't last very long. And I run into that too. Well, where did all the paint go? Why is it writing so badly? And then I shook it and realized, oh, I, all I hear is the ball. There's no paint in there. And so it's something to think about. When you are using paint pens, they're not all going to last forever. This is not going to be an unending pen. You need to realize that they do have a small amount of paint in them and they only last so long. They're very easy to use, but they are definitely not the cheapest option when it comes down to painting things, but it is a lot easier than a brush and it does help you get those details. The bottom line with this is that really any paint pen you choose, just choose one that is of good quality. Again, these three, the Thule Art, the Fly C and the Artistro, I can recommend all three of them because I have used them myself. They have given me really good results and I've been really happy with what I've been getting from them. And again, I'll have the samples below in the description and where you can find those. I've also included the full supply list below in the description that does include affiliate links, which means anytime you purchase, I'll get a small commission at no cost to yourself. So if you're interested in another video about painting and paint pens, click here. This video is about how to use fluid acrylics. And in this video, I show you how to use it in a squeeze bottle to work like a paint pen as well as several other techniques to use these in your projects. So I'll see you in the next video.